so cool. What are you looking at? Just highlights from the show this weekend. You should see what these guys jumped. Like massive tables down in the water, these huge oxes. So cool. You know what, Jimmy? I think it's time for Shramo to move up a level. You can hardly stay on a horse. Yeah, but Jimmy, here's the problem. It's not cool to be jumping 12-inch jumps all the time. I need to be jumping the big stuff. What's not cool is getting eliminated because you're not ready. Details. Let's go jumping. All right, Jimmy. I think today's the day. I'm going to jump four foot. Let's jack it up. I think this is a bad idea. What'd you say? Nothing. Yeah, it's okay. I've been watching these uh, online tutorials. They're really good. I'm ready. So, feel cool now? Yeah. G'day, welcome to Avention TV. If you didn't join us for our last tutorial, we're looking at how to know when you're ready to move up. We're using the three lowest levels of US eventing, beginner, novice, novice, and training. We've already covered the dressage. Today, it's show jumping. To get started, we've built an example of each level's jumps in our arena at home. We're starting off with beginner, novice here. This is a very typical beginner, novice vertical. It's got a max height of two foot seven. And as you can see here, we've made it with just rails. So there's no fill or flowers or anything scary for the horses. And that's pretty typical of what you're going to see at the show. There's generally, you're going to have a course of about 9 to 11 of these. And you're not going to see too many combinations. Lots of nice flowing lines, big turns, where you've got plenty of time to get your horse to the next jump. At beginner novice, you've either probably got a green horse or a green rider. So we're really trying to build confidence for the horses. If that doesn't look too scary to you, you're probably very comfortable with beginner novice show jumping. Before we head on to the next few jumps, let's go to an invention quick Q&A. This week's quick Q&A comes from Gillian Howland in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And Gillian asks, what are some tips to keep your horse relaxed during the stadium? Well, Gillian, nerves run high before you go on the show jumping at the show. So the best thing you can do is be prepared. Make sure that your horse has been seeing that height and those types of questions regularly before the show and you'll feel better going in. Secondly, when you're walking the course, pick a part maybe halfway through where there's a bit of distance from one jump to another and dedicate that as being like your breathing time. As you ride through there on your horse, maybe re-establish the canter a little bit, tell yourself to be patient and to relax. I find that helps me stop the round from deteriorating and getting worse and gives you a little bit of time to think. Hope this helps, Gillian. Back to the action. Welcome back, guys. I'm here at a typical novice level jump. Your height's going to be 211 now, and still 9 to 11 jumps in your course. The biggest difference between beginner novice and novice is going to be the fill. You're going to start seeing more flowers, gates, and coops underneath the rails of the jumps. Another big difference is you're going to have a combination. And for those of you that don't know, a combination is when there's two jumps in a row with one, two, or three strides in between. So now we're going to head over to this training level jump, and Dom's going to explain to you the difference between novice and training. Thanks, babe. Yeah, no, this is a training level oxa, so we're working with a height of about three foot three now. And for an oxa, you're going to see the jump be as wide as it is high. Uh, the biggest difference here between these two jumps that makes it quite scary is the fill underneath and definitely makes the horses take a bit of a look. We're also going to see triple combinations on the course, so that's three jumps in a row, with at least one of them being a, an oxer. And just definitely a much bigger, bolder course. A couple more jumps, we can have 13 up now, and then also a faster speed, 325 meters a minute. All right guys, let's head to a Shramo shout out. This week's shout out goes to Return to Freedom Wild Horse Sanctuary. 
They're dedicated to preserving the freedom, diversity and habitat of America's wild horses. Founded in 1997, they operate a 300 acre ranch in California. Check them out, back to the action. Welcome back. So some of the factors that may be holding you back from moving up. The most obvious and probably the most insignificant one is the height of the jumps. The horses do in fact have to jump a little bit bigger as you move up the levels. Really that's something that you've got to do very gradually over time at home. Find the height that you're comfortable with and jump that at home and when he feels good or when you're having a good training session, gradually build up. You don't have to immediately begin with the maximum height of the level you want to move up to. You can do it over time and that's the best way to keep the horse's confidence up at bigger jumps. The next factor is rideability. As the courses get more difficult, the course designers expect more rideability from the horses. Some exercises that you can do at home to increase your horse's rideability. Have two jumps set up, maybe five strides apart, and adjust how many strides the horse does in between them. Practice curving lines and see how many strides you can do on a curve between two jumps. Also too, expect your horse to be able to pick up the correct lead over a jump as you alternate directions. This will all help make your horse more rideable. Spookiness or horse confidence is another big factor in determining when we can move up. An important thing to remember here is to be patient. Horses get confident in different rates and it's really good to be exposing them to stuff constantly at home. Now you don't need a bunch of fancy stuff, you can get really creative. Buying fake flowers from the dollar store or building your own stuff can be a great way of exposing them to new fill that they're going to be seeing at the show and hopefully increasing their confidence as you go. Last but not least, probably one of the most important factors when you're considering moving up in the show jumping, and that is rider confidence. It's very, very easy to get nervous on the edge of the show jumping ring when you're in the competition. I'm nervous. So it's important that you're practicing under pressure constantly at home. You can do this just by setting small goals in your training sessions. I want to jump one, two, three, four, five, six jumps and I don't want to make any mistakes. I want to get every lead, I want to get the exact distances I want. When you can be doing this regularly at home, as well as introducing Phil, maybe some slightly bigger fences, you're going to be practicing the right kind of things so that when you get to the show, neither you or your horse is going to freeze up. All right guys, hopefully there's some helpful tips for you here. Join us next tutorial when we take a look at our final phase, cross country. See ya.